On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1994. We're going to be taking a look at Nancy Griffith, and she's going to be performing Love at the Five and Dime. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus, and welcome to another analysis video. First of all, thank you for the multiple requests for this video tonight. Following the sad news that Nancy passed away recently, we're going to be taking a look at her performance of Love at the Five and Dime. And I did a video on Nancy not so long ago, probably about a year ago. So I'll find a way to maybe link you guys to that at the end if you haven't seen that video, because in this one, we're going to be focusing on her guitar playing because she's got some serious finger style ability going on and she did have throughout her songs that would just fly under the radar because of the vocal that you're listening to over the top. So we'll jump into that but that other video that includes more information about her career you will be able to find that at the end of this video but let's get Nancy up on screen and we'll watch it the whole way through and then we'll get into the analysis at the end. This song of mine has been probably the most pivotal song of my career because it was also it was my first Grammy nomination and it was um, also the first hit for Kathy Matea. I wrote this song at a Canadian folk festival where I had been required um, through a seminar of songwriters to write a new song for this songwriter's seminar. And I stayed up the night before and had written this short story about a couple named Eddie and Rita called Love at the Five and Dime and uh, plagiarized myself, spent 20 minutes writing this song, thought I'd never play it again, and um, that's what it ended up being, a song about a Woolworth store and a couple named Eddie and Rita. Woolworth stores are closing all over the United States. Don't know how long they'll be here, here in the UK, but if you never waltz the aisles and you've never bought a Christmas cracker there, maybe you ought to go while you still can. Rita was sixteen years, hazel eyes and chestnut hair. She made a Woolworth counter shine. And Eddie was a sweet romancer and a darn good dancer. And they'd waltz the aisles of the five and nine. Now Eddie played the steel guitar. Mama cried cause he played in the bars And he kept young Rita out late at night So they married up in Abilene Lost a child in Tennessee And still that love survived Cause they'd sing Dance a little closer to me Dance a little closer Dance a little closer tonight Dance a little closer to me hey, It's closing time and love's on sale Tonight it's just five and nine One of the boys in Eddie's band Took a shine to read us in So Eddie ran off with the basement's wife Oh, but he was back by June, a slang in a different tune, sporting his reader back by his side. And he sang, dance a little closer to me, dance a little closer now, dance a little closer tonight, dance a little closer. Travel with the bar and band till our thread has took his hands. Now he sells insurance on the side. And we just got her house to keep. She writes dime store novels of a love so sweet. They dance to a radio late at night. And still sing, dance a little closer to me. Dance a little closer now Dance a little closer tonight Dance a little closer to me It's close time and love's on the 
that it was a sweet romance. I heard he was a darn good dancer, and it was the Isles of the Fun Day. It was the Isles of the Fun Day. We could all go tomorrow and take a date. Well, who was the Isles of the Fun? And there we have it. With this performance, the reason that I left in the intro where Nancy's just telling the story behind the song is that you can get a definite appreciation of the difference between her talking voice, which she uses when she sings, but also the way that she leans into that sound and just leans on her diaphragm a little bit more in the chorus. And this is the thing about the dynamic range within her voice because she's got that storytelling quality to it to the point where when she introduces the song it's the same voice that she's using when she's singing but then when she gets into the chorus she just adds a little bit more to it to make that chorus just to stand out a little bit more and as I mentioned in the other video that I did on Nancy her vocal quality is so good. I mean, the notes are so clean and she can also put that little bit of air through her vocal cords in order to get that softer sound dynamically. But she's hitting the notes right between the eyes. She hasn't got any vibrato really here. She's just hitting these notes dead on. And it is so important to do that. If she didn't, it would sound really bad, but she just had total accuracy when it comes to pitch. When performing live, Nancy is accompanying herself on the guitar and there is so much going on with the guitar playing here that you won't really notice unless you play guitar. I mean, you might look at it and think, oh, it looks quite complicated or maybe you think it doesn't look complicated, but it definitely is. There's so much work going on with that right hand. We've got Travis picking going on, jumping between the A string and the D string and the tuning of the strings, by the way, they are tuned to a B flat, I believe, in terms of the chord. And what I'll do is I'll get the guitar out so that you guys can have a little look at what's being played here. We'll have a little rough go through it, but just the ability to play this and sing so accurately over the top and all of this playing is subconscious from Nancy. So she was such an accomplished guitarist. So when mentioning this Travis picking technique on the right hand, we're jumping from our A string over to our G string. So we're actually skipping a string there, giving us this running bass line of like that. And as I said, you're gonna to have to retune your guitar to a B flat chord here. And if my tuning does go out ever so slightly, we'll just busk our way through it, but it's because my guitar was in standard tuning just before retuning it, um, before picking it up. So when we've got this running bass line going, we've also got something going on with the other fingers. So we get that counter melody over the top. And to begin with, we've got this high E string that's being played at the same time and then that thumb has to come in. Kind of like that, so look at that. And what I love about the progression of the chords, the way that the melody changes on the guitar is that we get this emphasis of, and then, and then a harmonic, like that, all the way down to, so you're getting almost like lead notes within the picking, and that's very much what Travis Picking's all about. You've got that running bass line, but you're also getting a counter melody over the top that has almost a lead element to it. So you're hearing two things at once, and it sounds very complicated, and it is keeping everything going at once. So playing through that first phrase, it means we've got something similar to, I haven't been through this working out note for note, but we've got this kind of vibe, the And now this second lead note comes in. And we get that little harmonic up at the top there, which is so cool. And once we've gone through that, we're then making our way down to, and we might have the open A string here with our high E string. And again, we've 
we've got a little run there that we're then coming back up to. Oh, there's a, another harmonic up at the top there. So trying to piece that together, we've got. start back to the beginning. So even just playing through it once, I'm really concentrating here to try and get it all down. And this is one of those things that obviously Nancy just makes it look really easy because it's all subconscious and she can do it all. But all of this picking is so involved and she does go down to the E string. I think occasionally it's difficult to make that out, but she also sometimes picks with her third finger and second finger instead of her thumb and her first finger instead of her thumb and just chops and changes. So she's got it totally under control the whole time. She never misses a note, by the way, throughout the whole performance. When we get down to the chords, we're now playing very softly, but you'll notice as well that if I just play the video, I might pause it because there we can see the fact that she's got on that thumb pick, but also the finger picks. And I haven't got any picks on my fingers, but hopefully uh, you'll be able to hear what I'm playing over the amplifier. So when she's playing through these shapes, these cycles with the right hand, it's all really clean. When she gets into the chords at the bottom, she's now going into that strumming technique and you'll see the way that she's got her thumb and her first finger quite far apart because when she goes down, she sometimes uses that first finger to catch that high E string. And here, when she gets to the last chord, She'll use that first finger just to catch that high E string so you hear the variation of the chord a little bit more clearly. So she just transitions into that strumming, keeps it all really dynamically played. There's so much dynamic appreciation in the playing from Nancy, even though she's singing over the top at the same time, it's not just playing all at one level. She's applying dynamics to the really technical finger style playing that she's doing. And also with these shapes at the bottom of the guitar, Nancy's just sliding into them sometimes. So we've got this. Like that, so strumming, sliding down with the chord. Same thing, strumming, sliding up with the chord. Kind of like that. And if you're wanting to know these chords or at least know the shapes, all you want to do here is place in as if you're going to play an E chord and you're going to be on your, well, seventh fret if you ignore the capo, so just aim for your third dot on the guitar and place down an E shape, but then move your first finger down onto the B string so that we leave that G string open like that. Kind of like that. And then slide it down, same shape. Kind of like that. And then, here just, I mean, now we'll call the bottom of the guitar from the capo. We're second fret on the A string with the first finger and third fret with the little finger on the B string. And then she just comes on, I think with her second finger onto that second fret of the high E string. And she's, Going back into that finger style, kind of like that. So just emphasizing that high E string before getting back into, I think it's something like, like that before starting the whole verse again. And here 
what I'm doing, and I'm not sure what Nancy's doing, because it's so dynamically played, it is sometimes hard to hear the notes that are going on. But we've got this. So now letting go of that high E string, to then hear our next lead note come in. Then that harmonic there. Harmonic is on your 15th fret, and you just want to be above that 15th fret in order to catch that one. And then we're sliding down, and here, all that's happening is we're barring with that first finger, and this is going to be on your 8th fret, and we're going exactly the same with the A string, high E string, and that thumb, again, is still traveling from the A to the G string, like that. And you want to place on either your third finger or little finger, doesn't really matter, whichever is most comfortable. We've got this, this. She lets it go down to the open string while she transitions up to that harmonic again. And then we're back into the verse again. And now to the open string. So it's probably going to be quite difficult if you're trying to follow this and you're just starting playing guitar. It's not one of those songs to take on straight away. Like I said, you're not going to be able to just pick up the guitar and start playing. This kind of finger style and the Travis picking and the harmonic that's in there, the barring, there's so much technique in here that Nancy just doesn't give you any idea of how difficult this is to play, let alone play it and then sing like she does over the top. She's moving around with that right hand, but she does it so seamlessly, it's sometimes hard to spot with all the changes going on, but also that dynamic appreciation that she has, especially when she slides down and we come down to the bar on our eighth fret and we get this. Those notes there, I'm playing them quite flat, dynamically, but she throws them in so subtly with that, or the, and then she might get the high E string to pop out after those really subtly played strings previously. Just to throw in there as well about uh, me referring to it as finger style, it's the same as finger picking, which is a term that you might have heard before as well. And with Nancy having finger picks on and a thumb pick on, then it would be described as finger picking, probably is more accurate rather than finger style, which is what I'm doing, I haven't got any picks on my hand. So I'd probably refer to what I'm doing as finger style and probably what Nancy's doing as finger picking, but it's both really the same way of describing playing with your fingers. It just depends how finicky you want to be in terms of the definitions. But here with Nancy, we could see earlier, she had those finger picks on. So you can definitely refer to this as finger picking, but it's just exactly the same as what I'm doing here. But you've just got those finger picks on your fingers and one on your thumb. Considering the fact that it's just Nancy and a guitar and her voice, she can just keep your attention the whole time. And having this ability for songwriting, again, that's another side of it, being able to just write great songs that communicate the message very clearly to an audience and then get that audience to connect to the message that is being communicated. And Nancy was one of those top level songwriters, but just a top level communicator. And this is certainly a great example of it because you take for granted the backing. You almost don't think about the guitar work going on because of her voice being so engaging, but being so accurate, so unique to listen to, but it is just the full package of being a fantastic guitar player, fantastic vocalist, a fantastic songwriter. And it's great that we can look back at these kind of performances where Nancy just takes your attention for the whole, I mean, this is rare to have an artist that has this kind of ability at their instrument, but also just is the full package. The true artist, as I mentioned in that other video on Nancy that I did, but certainly not the circumstances under which I'd want to feature Nancy again. But fortunately, videos like this, her performances, her songs will be around for the rest of time. And hopefully videos like this will shed a little bit more light on her ability on the fretboard and what a top guitarist she was with these counter melodies. The way that she's arranged it on guitar is so impressive considering that she's singing over the top of it the whole time as well. And it's such a unique vocal that she had. 
But thank you guys for requesting this video. I hope you did enjoy it. I'm gonna put a link to the previous video that I did on Nancy at the end of this video where I do get into her career at the end of that as well. But I'll just leave this performance with you guys and just go back to that original performance, watch it all the way through. It's certainly not one of those that you want to interrupt because it is all about the story in Nancy's songs and just having that top level songwriting and story telling ability but I'll see you guys at the next one